Hello and welcome to another video by electricalpereview.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about engineering economics, doing a quick introduction and discussing cash flow diagrams. These problems are usually very simple. It's just a matter of being able to figure out what equation to use and being able to break down more complex cash flow diagrams into simpler ones. So let's jump into it. Okay, first things first on your screen, I'm just going to pick on this one formula just to give an example. Uh, this is find a future worth F if you're given a present worth value. So a lot of times you're going to see these formulas, depending on the book, they're going to be referenced like this. So this just simply reads F given P for an interest of I over time period of N, N standing for the compounding periods. Um, pretty much this right here is going to be your ratio that you multiply by the present value and that's going to give you your F. So all of these equations pretty much follow the same format. Oops, either it's uh, geometric, annual, uniform, what have you. Um, it's all going to be the same format. And basically how to carry it out is this guy right here, this 1 plus I to the N, that's what's going to give you your ratio here. And you multiply what you get with this with your present worth value. So. Uh, no matter what the problem is, the first step is to figure out the right equation to use, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then you look at the actual formula, you figure out the ratio using your interest value and your uh, compounding period value, and then you multiply that by whatever you're going from, which in this case would be P, to get what you're going to, in this case would be F. So for example, if I was given, say, a present worth of 25000 over a compounding period of n equals five years at an interest rate of i equals five percent we could easily find that by just saying okay i want to find f so i'm going to multiply p by f given p at an interest rate of five percent at a pay period of n equals two five years and then all we would do is we would plug in our value. So I would have my $25,000 times. And we're going to go right, just copy right up here. We're going to have 1 plus 0 0.05 because we always use our interests as decimals in these problems times a pay period of 5. We would plug that in our calculator and we would get F equals $25,000 multiplied by that decimal we just got is 1.2763 and then we would multiply that by our $25,000 to come up with our future worth of $25,000 is equal to $31,907 okay next we're going to talk about the different types of formulas and the equivalent cash flow diagrams and again, these problems are all about understanding the correct cash flow diagram and how to interpret it. Okay, this is a basic cash flow template for a period of n equals to 5. Your diagram is always going to start at n equals 0, and it's going to end at n equals n. So if we were, say, going to n equals 10, we would take this out from 0 and go all the way to 10. Now, the first example we have is present worth, or P. P is always going to be shown on year zero, or I'm sorry, time period zero. Here's your P. It would be negative for a sunk cost, like a deposit, or it could be positive, like this, if it was a one-time payment at uh, n equals zero. Okay, next we have future worth, or F. Future worth is always going to be at the very end of your cash flow diagram, and it typically looks like this. So for a period of n equals to 5, our future worth would be right here. And that's like, say, taking withdrawal after 5 years of compounding yearly or 5 months after compounding monthly. Uh, almost always your F is going to be positive, but that's not to say that it couldn't um, be negative. Say if you had to make a payment in 5 years, uh, that sort of thing. So that is future worth F. Next, we have Uniform Series A, and that's going to look something like this. And that's going to be all the same value of A, um, always starting at n equals 1. A Uniform Series would never start at 0. 
If you had any amount right here, again, that would be your P, your present worth. So this would be A, uniform series. Benefit was with A on the top because our person of interest is getting money. If the A's were on the bottom like this, then it would be considered a cost since from the perspective of our person of interest, they are depositing money or losing money since anything below is negative, right? Anything below the line is negative, either depositing or losing money. Then anything on the top of the cash flow diagram is positive. The money's going back to the person of interest. Next we have G for arithmetic gradient. And that's gonna look something like this. At n equals one, we have zero always. At n equals two, we have a value of g. At n equals three, we have a value of two g. And then at n equals four, we have a value of three g. And then at n equals to five, we have a value for four g. Important thing to note is your n equals one will always have zero. Sometimes students mess up by putting the g right on one. Um, that is not correct. Your gradient always starts off at zero g at time equals to one. And then basically your value at each time spot is gonna be g times n minus one. Just like at five, our value is g times our n is 5, 5 minus 1 is 4g. Okay, we're going to look at some of the ways these can all be um, combined. So the top is we're going to have a complex cash flow diagram. And on the bottom over here, these two templates, we're going to use them to show uh, the two contributions. So the first, real simple, we'll look at both a present worth, P, and a future worth, F say we have someone that uh, deposits something at time equals to p into a bank account doesn't touch it lets it sit doesn't make any more payments nothing happens until at the end um, at n equals n we take a withdrawal so this is very easy to conceptualize we start with present and future worths first because it makes the others simpler but really we can just show this as a single present worth cash flow diagram plus a you guessed it future worth Okay, the next one in increasing difficulties, we're gonna look at a cash flow diagram like this. This is pretty simple to say. We know it's a uniform series and some future amount, but where most people get this wrong is at time period of n equals n, instead of this being our future amount, this is actually gonna be our future plus our uniform amount. And that's because if you remember, annual series always go from not at zero, but starting at one all the way to the last period. So we actually have an A value right here. So since this is A, this amount on top of it has to be our future worth F. And then combined, we have our F plus A at the very end. So what does this look like when we break it up? Well, it's going to look like this. Here's our uniform, here's our uniform benefit series. Benefit, of course, because it's positive. So this cash flow diagram is going to be the sum of this one plus a single future amount F at period five. Simple enough. Again, most important thing to remember is that your uniform series does not start at zero. It starts at one, and it's gonna go all the way at the end of the period. So anytime you have a future amount, this amount up here is actually going to be F plus A, not just F. So an example of that, we could say if our annual series A was $50 and our future worth was say $150 well these two cash flow diagrams would look like this we would have $50 from periods 1, 2, 3, and 4 and then our fifth period it would be the sum of our uniform series and our future amount so this amount right here would be, of course, $200. Pretty simple. Okay, next we've got a present worth at n equals zero, followed by a uniform payment. Well, this can be broken up to look like this. We've got our present worth at n equals zero, plus our uniform, our uniform benefit payment here 
all of our a's. And again, remember, a does not start at time equals zero. A starts at one always and goes all the way to the last. Okay, how about this one? Kind of similar to a few back. We've got a uniform series on the bottom, so it's a cost. These are negative values. And we've got a feature amount here on five. And again, you should know this by now, this does not equal f, right? This is actually going to equal f minus a. And why is that? Well, let's break this up. We're going to say that cash flow diagram right there can be shown as these two on the bottom. So here we have our uniform cost, starting at 1 all the way to n equals 5, plus our future worth, f. Now another way we can show this is since this value right here is actually f minus a, since we do have, in fact, an annual distribution on 5, instead of having our negative a, right, because these are all negative, instead of having our negative a plus f, we can have future worth f minus our uniform cost, f minus a. And again, this value up here in the combined cash flow diagram, this is not just f, this is f minus a, since we have this right here at 5, a negative a, and we have a future amount f at 5. Okay, next we're going to talk about these two terms right here. This is equivalent uniform annual benefit. And this right here is equivalent uniform annual cost. Anytime we're looking at this, we have equivalent uniform annual. All that's really saying is, is we're going to have either uniform series benefit minus uniform series cost. That's if our benefit is larger than our cost. That would be our uniform annual uh, benefit. And then the next is if we had our annual cost minus our annual benefit. And anytime we say annual, all it is, it's a uniform series on a yearly term. So even though it says EUAC and EUAB, this could also be equivalent uniform monthly benefit or cost. And so again, all that means is if we have two series, so let's say we have an annual benefit like that, and then we also had an annual cost like that, we could subtract the two. So in this case, we're gonna assume our annual benefit is larger and we would come up with the equivalent annual benefit. And it would look something like this. And of course, it's just a uniform series as well. Okay, let's look at some of the ways gradients can be combined. This right here is a uniform series A plus G. Now, be careful here. A lot of times students will get this wrong. They will see this and just interpret this as a gradient and not realize that there's a uniform series term in here. And uh, the biggest thing to remember is anytime you're working with only a gradient G, it's always going to start at 2 as value G, and there's going to be nothing on 1. Okay, let's break this down into our uniform series plus gradient. Okay, of course, here's our uniform series. And next, we're going to add it to a gradient. Again, just like we said, notice how the gradient always starts as 0 at n equals 1, and it's going to be G as n equals 2 and it's continued to be g times n minus 1. So at 5, n minus 1 is 4, and our value is 4g. Pretty simple. Okay, next, what about this one? And there's a reason why I don't have the terms filled in just yet. Uh, we know, looking at it right away, we know it's going to be some kind of gradient, but it's facing backwards. So how do we resolve this into two equivalent cash flow diagrams? Well, what about these terms? If I write this down, does it make it more clear? Okay, look at that. We've got on n equals 1, a, n equals 2, we've got a minus g. At n equals 3, we've got a minus 2g, and we've got a minus 3g and a minus 4g. Does that work? Well, let's show our two equivalent cash flow diagrams. So this one right here is going to equal, is going to equal our uniform series minus our gradient. And again, our gradient starts at n equals 2 as g, and it's always going to have a value of 0 at n equals 1. So does this work? This is one that students really get confused, so just quick note. So at n equals to 1, oops, and I made a mistake here. We should not have anything right here. Okay, so at n equals 1, we've got a, a 
minus 0. That's right. That's a. Next, at n equals 2, we have a minus g. So at 2, we've got a minus g. Okay, that works so far. At 3, we've got a minus 2g. So a minus 2g. All right, looks good. At 4, we've got a minus 3g. So a minus 3g. And then at 5, we've got a minus 4g. And that's a minus 4g. So be really careful. This one, I'm telling you, stumps a lot of people. So make sure you understand it. Uh, look at some of the examples we'll do in other videos. Because when they give you this kind of cash flow diagram, they're not going to give you uh, the courtesy of these A, A minus G, A minus 2G. You need to know that all you're going to have up here are um, cash values. So you're going to have to recognize, oh, okay, well, my gradient is backwards. That's the same thing as a uniform series minus that gradient value. Make sense? Okay, that's about it for our cash flow diagrams and our quick introduction. From here on out, we're going to do a couple of quick examples on using the right formulas for different problems. For more PE exam practice problems and to try our online review course, come see us at electricalpereview.com. See you soon.